One of these phones costs 148,000 naira, the other costs 315,000, and the third costs well over 400,000 naira. See if you can tell which is the Itel S23 Plus. I'm not going to say, just leave it in the comments. I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. How is it possible to put a curved AMOLED display on a phone that costs less than $150 and with Gorilla Glass 5 protection? Itel is doing their best to bring that premium feel to the very budget end of smartphones. The user that wants premium while spending the minimum possible for that premium feel. That is what you get with the Itel S23 Plus. Now, where have they cut corners to make this possible? When you look at the ITL S23 Plus, it looks like a love child between a Samsung and an iPhone. I'm referring to the curved display and that iPhone type camera bump on the rear. And being named the S23 Plus does not exactly help its case because it seems like they have named it after a Samsung device. I'm sure everyone was surprised seeing ITL jumping all the way from low budget end of smartphones to somewhat still low budget but what I would like to call premium budget. Now this phone costs 148,000 naira. In dollars, it costs around 130. I cannot think of any smartphone you can buy right now with a curved AMOLED display for this price, unless it's one of those older flashes from like six years ago. So it's more a question of how is this possible, whereas ITEL cut corners, cause that's definitely expected. ITEL is not a brand we expected such a device from. All their devices cost way below 100,000 naira. That is to say, this is their most expensive and arguably their best effort so far. It is reasonable to look at the ITEL S23 Plus with lowered expectations because as premium as this looks, it is still a budget device. That is to say, performance-wise, it will not perform any better than other devices around its price point. Now, I'm not saying that to mean that the S23 Plus is a low-performance device. It is more in the performance range of other devices you will find at this price point, with the selling point being a more premium build and design. I mean, it has Gorilla Glass 5 on the display. I'm sure there's already those saying it uses a Unisoc processor, therefore nothing good can come from it. Well, that would be judging it too quickly because the Unisoc T616 is a processor with performance just above a MediaTek Helio G85. With this build quality, that sounds about right for this price point. We'll talk more about this performance later. Now, I would have expected ITEL to name this differently though. The S23 released earlier this year looks nothing like this, so it doesn't exactly look like a plus variant of that same phone. There are some questionable choices ITEL made here though. It comes in a nice box, comes with wired earphones, USB-C cable, a case, but Here's the charger. I mean, of all the places to cut down on cost, why the charging brick? You could say they are really trying to make a statement in the premium segment, but not even Techno Infinix has gone as far as removing the charging brick. Maybe they have their reasons? Also, they removed the headphone jack. Not exactly a big deal since they were thoughtful enough to add the USB-C earphones in the box. So, I guess they get a pass for that one. Now, if you're wondering why this box, it is the official retail packaging. That's what I got when I purchased it. That long red box is a special version. I think it was sent to some creators and other influencers. Maybe other regions would get it. It also contains Bluetooth earbuds. So, if you're buying one, I don't think you'll be getting that package. At least in Nigeria. This packaging is finer anyway. With the ITEL S23, the design speaks for itself and I can only confirm what you already see. It is a good looking curved AMOLED display. It is of 1080p resolution and with 500 nits of peak brightness. The peak brightness is quite the conventional with the standards for devices at this price point. However, one thing ITEL could have done that would have made this a lot better is a 90Hz display. The ITEL S23 Plus has 60Hz refresh rate which is actually not bad when you consider all other features it comes with. But if you've previously used a phone with 90 or 120Hz, you'll definitely feel it. Though if you are coming from a phone with a standard 60Hz display, it won't bother you. I think at this price point, only Samsung dare to put a 60Hz display on a phone and that's the A14 4G. Most other smartphones above 100K have 90Hz displays. Enabling Ultra Touch from the settings should help improve things, but if it's not 90Hz or higher, it can only try. The ITEL S23 Plus employs an optical fingerprint scanner, which in my experience works just fine to unlock the device. I noticed an issue with the sensor that is supposed to prevent touches while in the pocket. It was always triggered whenever I pressed the power button to turn on the display. Yeah, that's it. In the last two days, it has not happened consistently, but it's annoying when it does. Maybe it's just my unit, but this is the official retail one. Hopefully, it's not happening to others. You can go disable the inadvertent mode from the settings if you're experiencing this. However, you might trigger touch responses while the phone is in pocket. The build quality is quite solid and it's lightweight. Lighter than the Phantom X2 Pro. I think a bit lighter than Infinix Zero 35G. And it doesn't feel cheap at all. 
there's a mono speaker setup here which is quite loud and not disappointing on the software side of things we see itel os 13 on android 13. now i have no idea if there will be future os upgrades this is actually the first itel device i'm reviewing proper but it's a budget device so expectations should be managed i find it impressive that there are no ads here yeah, you heard right. And that has exceeded my expectations because I had the impression that there will be ads or bloatware apps disturbing with pop-ups, you know, as one of the areas where they cut corners. But that is not the case. If you get ads on the SLS 23 Plus, it will likely be from the apps you install, not from the UI. Also, if you know your way around, you can enable icon theming and take advantage of the material you integration and end up with a setup like what I have here. You can find that toggle in the special function settings under accessibility. Just enable themed icons. Your icons will adapt its color to something that matches your current wallpaper. Now, not all the icons will change and that is expected even on other devices. The clock widget I used, you can get by installing Google's clock application from the Play Store and you get access to it. ITEL is promoting a dynamic bar feature that's more like the iPhone's dynamic island but I can't seem to find it here in the settings. I'm yet to receive a software update that is supposed to activate it. Personally, it isn't something I'm interested in but I guess if you fancy it on the iPhone, this is one way to experience it without buying the iPhone. Although, if you want iPhone features, just save up and buy an iPhone. Just kidding, it's the beauty of Android, you can experience whatever you want. ITEL joins the likes of Techno and Infinix with the integration of ChatGPT into the voice assistant. They call theirs Ivana. That is to say, while it functions as a regular voice assistant to carry out the basic tasks, it can grant you proper conversations as you would expect from ChatGPT. So you can ask it to do complex stuff and it will come through. Let's just do a demo. Android or iPhone? I don't have personal preferences since I'm not a human being. However, both Android and iPhone have their own unique features and Yeah, that's enough. Now, if you ask, say, Google Assistant, Siri or Bixby, you're not going to get as detailed response as this. You can ask it to do a ton of other stuff, which you can probably get from ChatGPT, and it would do. It's nice to see them integrating it here. ITEL has done their best to squeeze in as much value possible to make the S23 Plus a worthwhile device. I kid you not when I say you can hold this device anywhere and unless you specify, nobody will be able to tell it's an ITEL phone. Much more even guess it costs 148k. Now let's talk about the infamous Unisoc Tiger T616 power in the sky. As I mentioned earlier, it stands just above a MediaTek Helio G85 in performance. Does it make this device lag or heat up? Not in my experience. As long as you're not expecting it to perform like a device above its price, you should be fine. You get it with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of internal storage. ITEL also decided you don't need expandable storage. That's one of the definitions of premium these days. The S23 Plus is capable of some gaming if you decide to do that. It will play titles like Call of Duty Mobile at medium graphics settings and high frame rate. The device might get warm during long gaming sessions, but nothing abnormal. You also might experience a few occasional stutters here and there while gaming for long. But again, at this price point, that is expected. You can check Victor Prey's channel if you want a more detailed gaming review. I'll link his video in the description. He has a dedicated gaming review you might want to check out if you plan to use this for a lot of gaming. The battery life on ITEL's S23 Plus is solid and should meet your expectations of a 5000 mAh battery. I'd say ITEL already has good reputation when it comes to battery life and a curved AMOLED display here doesn't make this phone any different. For charging, it only supports 18 watts fast charging and you need to purchase the charging brick because it's not in the box. ITEL specs it up in a camera department, adding a 50 megapixel main camera and a 32 megapixel selfie camera. Ignore the two other camera rings, one is a flashlight and the other I don't know what it is. Now the cameras will do just fine under the right lighting conditions. Images from the rear camera comes out good looking on the surface but sometimes it appears to lack a little in detail unless you are shooting in ultra HD mode which you then require the perfect lighting conditions for. Portrait looks good except that subject separation is not quite there. I'm actually more impressed with the quality from the selfie camera. The images look good including with HDR, not lacking in detail, also not softening the image like most smartphones at this price point. Low light is not a strength here as while it tries is best to give usable results, it sometimes comes out a little soft, but it does a decent job with a few tries. For videos, it can do no more than 1080p 30fps from both selfie and rear cameras, which is pretty much the standard at this price point. Okay, so this is the video quality from the selfie cameras of the ITEL S23 Plus. I think this is a 32 megapixel selfie camera, but yeah, this is what it can do. Uh, it doesn't have dual microphones, so we're only getting uh, mic recordings from the bottom mic. Uh, yep. Has the sound quality like, and how would you say the video quality is like from um, 
the viewfinder it looks great I'm um, going to confirm how it looks after the processing but yeah what do you think about this camera quality Itel has done a really good job with the S23 Plus, especially for their first attempt at something premium. I'm curious to see where they go from here. The pricing is really good, although 90Hz would have been the icing on the cake. Now before you go on and say 148k is too much for an Itel phone, note that back in January this would have cost somewhere around 120k or less, or even a year ago it would have cost about 100k. Blame it on our unstable currency and the economy. For the current price of the Itel S23 Plus, your options are Redmi Note 12, Samsung's A14, Infinix or 35G if you find it or spark 10 5g but none of these will give you that premium feel with the curved amoled display so it's up to you what you want from your smartphone is the itl s23 plus worth it for the price i'd say yes now you can check out my review of the infinix or 35g here or the redmi note 12 this way peace